Let's talk business. This is how we're moving yours forward. Standard Bank, moving forward. in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. Security company Protea Coins Helicopter is now operating with a forward-looking infrared system fitted by local company Challenge Air. Keith Campbell reports. Making a modification to any aircraft, in this case fitting a forward-looking infrared system of FLIR to a Robinson R-44 helicopter is not simple. It requires the close involvement of aviation regulators in this case, the South African Civil Aviation Authority, or SACAA. Challenger Principal Engineer Structures, Kavita Van Mari, discusses the project. This project started uh, sometime in 2011. Um, it had to go through SCC approval, uh, and at that point, we had to get an SCC approval for this installation of the FLIR system. So it started off some time ago, and it involved, because you're putting equipment in the uh, rotorcraft, you have to do a lot of analysis and testing on the system itself. So Challenger was involved in designing a bracket for the monitor for the FLIR system. Uh, there's an ECU unit, electronic control unit, that goes in the rotorcraft as well. And there was a cutout doublet required as well for the wire looms for the FLIR system. So Challenger designed, um, and we had to go through the whole process of getting it manufactured getting it conformed as well by, from CAA, and then at the, the last phase was involved in testing. So we, after the design, we had to hand in some documents to CAA. They had to get accepted. Uh, after they were satisfied with the, the design of it, they, we submitted a static test plan, uh, which means we had to test all the components that uh, went into the rotorcraft. So basically the monitor bracket, we had to get it tested, the ECU false floor. Uh, we conducted the static test that was found very successful and thereafter we conducted flight testing on this uh, system. Uh, the flight testing was more for vibration levels of the aircraft that it didn't interfere because we did a cutout uh, doubler for the wire looms for the FLIR system. Um, we they had to get um, from, from the CAA now, you have to get be part of this, uh, the design organization has to be see the whole uh, STC approval through. So before it was more on the design side, but now you've got to make sure the design is fine. The manufacturing has to be an approved manufacturer, uh, STC approved manufacturer, and the installation, you have to oversee the installation as well. The modified helicopter is operated by the Protea Coin Security Company. Chief Pilot George Tonking explains what they use the FLIR equipped helicopter for. We started the project in, uh, in 2010. Uh, we've started using the system officially after uh, putting it all together and with the help of, of Challenger uh, from December in uh, 2013. And we've had very good success with it. Um, uh, we fly with a pilot and an operator on the system. And uh, because of the capability of the system uh, being infrared, we can operate in, uh, uh, at night with the system and in, in, uh, in relatively uh, bad weather and also uh, we can operate with the system from a standoff distance which allows us not to uh, draw attention from the target and to, to actually record uh, the imagery that we, we capture for, for evidence purposes. We've done uh, various projects around the security industry uh, um, that we're involved in uh, from mining all the way through to uh, cash in transit or assets in transit. We've also done uh, some uh, work with community policing as well where we uh, provided air support uh, for one particular case where we recovered uh, a young lady who had, uh, who had gone missing um, uh, resulting in a positive outcome uh, with her being found alive and well. Other news making headlines this week, Al Gore launches his African climate change program. ESCOM is in talks with miners in a bid to replenish dry coarse coal stocks and Zambia expands its energy capacity. Former US Vice President and climate change lobbyist Al Gore has launched the African branch of the Climate Reality Project, which aims to mobilize individuals and organizations to implement climate change mitigation measures and spread the truth of climate change to communities on the continent. So, as the temperatures continue to increase, 
This pattern that I have been describing will, according to the scientists, continue. When I said at the outset it's important to take action sooner rather than later, the sooner we do stop treating the Earth's atmosphere as an open sewer, the sooner we will be able to start the recovery process. But these global warming pollutants stay in the atmosphere, some of them for quite a long time. So the sooner we start, the better. Electricity utility ESCOM and the Chamber of Mines are in talks about urgently replenishing stockpiles of coarse coal at its power stations, as these stocks have been depleted over the past two weeks, as much of the country has experienced a protracted period of wet weather. Then they have a, a, a five-day coarse coal stockpile at some of our stations. We've actually went after 2008 and bought specific coal. That is coarse, and we leave it there, we don't use it. When it rains, we then start using it and we blend it in with the wetter coal. Now, that is fine and it's worked well up to now, but because of these extensive rains, uh, stations has depleted that. Actually, last night, we had a meeting with the Chamber of Mines to partner with us to source for us specifically coarse coal at the station so that we have this stockpile to rebuild. Uh, you know, all the mines are, are wet out there, and so we've spoken to the Chamber last night and ask them to work with us specifically just to replenish and put back these coarse coal stockpiles. State-owned Zambia Electricity Supply Corporation aims to export its 200 to 300 megawatt surplus energy after an ambitious $5 billion generation and transmission expansion brought its capacity to over 2,200 megawatts. Historically, Zambia was a net exporter. I think from the early 80s, throughout the 80s, we were actually a net exporter into the region, Zimbabwe, uh, Congo. Uh, as the growth started, of course, there was a deficiency between the amount of generation available and what was being consumed. And we spent the last 20 years trying to get back to that position where we would satisfy the national demand and then have excess which we can export into the region. At Zesco, we have a very ambitious plan. Uh, the ambitious plan is to spend 5 billion US dollars over five years. That's an expenditure of a billion dollars a year. Uh, we've already done a year of that program. Uh, we actually have committed more than a billion during that year and this spend program will continue. Uh, on the transmission projects alone, for which I'm responsible, I'm currently committed up to about 800 million uh, dollars in terms of the projects that are active. So that is the plan. We are looking for five billion dollars and plan to spend a billion dollars a year on generation, transmission and distribution. That's Creamer Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insight into South Africa's real economy.